quite a bit nicer. <laughs> see? Yeah, but but then you can't see us. Mm. And if you can't see us, might as well just be full on just straight podcast. Yes. Which is not. Right. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you weren't ready for that. No. No. <laughs> I feel like maybe you're not ready for this. I just spent so much time setting it up, though. <laughs> I know. That's why I'm not ready for it, because the whole time you're setting up, I'm just getting more and more tired. <laughs> no, I'm fine. Podcast experiment number two. Family podcast. Fly around the room. Fly on the wall podcast. Hillary and Brian. Oh, that's kind of a cool name for a podcast. What's that? Fly on the wall? Mm-hmm. Maybe not this podcast, but. This isn't a podcast. There you go. This is my vlog channel. I'm just letting you take it over. See how nice I am to you? Maybe a future podcast. Future podcast. Fly on the wall. There's probably already one called that. Who knows? I don't know. I'm, I'm going to give you a floor. I'm just going to leave. I'm not the host. No, I'm... what? <laughs> I, I didn't check to make sure our cameras are pointed back at us. I, I hope they're recording right now. Otherwise, we're screwed. You better get up and check those cameras then. Is it weird that you can't see my face? Like, what is the point of me? Why don't I just hide my whole face behind this thing? Why do I have to have this thing? Can I just move this out of the way? Can't I just do this? You don't have a thing. I don't have a thing because I'm not going to be popping. And I got a different type of microphone where the pops aren't going to pop like Poppy. Like Popperton's. Is, like, I can kind of see myself over there and this is just really awkward. Well, let's take it down. I'll do whatever you want. Okay, good. I'm going to. I don't like it. That's very restrictive and like... You just go over there. There, look at that. It's gone. There. Much better. Like magic. Yeah. Whee! What's that thing even called? Magic. Hmm. That's called a pop screen. Keep the pop piece from p pooping into the poop. -poop. Try not to pop too much. <laughs> Did you see that? That was really nice. It was quite nice. Oh. It was a very pretty non-pop. Oh, I'm looking at myself over there. It's, yes. like, it's like black. I know. I know. It's weird. You want to talk about stuff? We're we just going to sit here and just be super weird and awkward. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the host. You're supposed I'm to like the instigate the conversation. Not, why, why do you have water on the table? Look, we, we got this like perfect table your water is giving me anxiety oh geez why um well you wanted me to do a anxiety update you can do whatever you want you can go to sleep if you want we'll just cut this okay Night. good night <laughs> <laughs> no um, i just thought it was weird that i had that little thing a couple days ago which i think ended up being a gastrointestinal type of thing but it felt like maybe I could understand what it felt like to have anxiety because, I mean, the shortness of breath. And, like, I thought I was like, what's wrong with me? Like, do I need to go to the hospital? I didn't want to say it, but I almost said I don't want to say it. But it sounds like you're having an anxiety attack. But not so much, like, the tightness of the chest. Well, yeah, no, yeah. I don't think it was. It was just that it had that big gastro, that, that big movement, you know, yeah, like no, several. Yeah, you clearly like, had I mean, I think I've heard that a lot of people end up going to the hospital thinking something's going on and it turns out to be gas. Yeah. I've never had that in my life. So it was just really odd. <clears throat> yeah. But it did give me that moment where it was like, there was a moment besides the thought that it was like some kind of cardiac thing. I also thought, maybe this is what it feels like to have an anxiety attack. Maybe I mean, I'm having if... one right now because I was about to go pick up Noah to go riding around the school and I've been busting my butt all morning, running around like a crazy man, trying to get all this stuff. Right. But like, if you were about to have, if you had an anxiety attack, I was going to freak out that there's something going on, like environmentally or in our house. I don't know. Something would be like, no way. Like so you luckily, never mm -hmm. had one. And then you just randomly have one. No. So luckily it was just a fart. <laughs> Did you end up farting? No, well, it was burp. an internal I had fart. A nice big burp. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. Too. You did. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely like gas, but it's scary when that happens. Yeah. So you probably feel like your anxiety was nothing compared to some of the anxiety 
stories that we've heard from people coming in. Yes, we talked about it and it made me, what did we say? Made me feel like a fake, a <laughs> phony. Not Hillary's really, fake. not like my experience was um, unjustified or not real, but it made me realize how many people experience it on such a more extreme level and how it affects their daily life and I mean I can't imagine if those experiences I had were something that happened very regularly it's I mean it's almost like people who get migraines that like cripple them for days it's kind of that thing and um it made me want to definitely share you know what so I ended up going when the last time we did this when was that? I hadn't gone to the doctor yet. Oh yeah, but you had, but you had had the. <clears throat> Did I have acupuncture? Uh, no, no, no. No, I don't think I had done anything yet. No. But I was feeling better. You were feeling so. This was before. Oh yeah, that it was before, right? Yeah, the anxiety thing. The main thing you had was before we did our first little sit down here. What did we talk about last time? Oh yeah, quitting the internet. Oh right, right, right. Yeah. So, well. Okay, I guess I quit my job. And that helped a ton because that's where that's where all the attacks came on. Yeah, that's where the I think I've had three like major ones and those two of them happened there. And um I think after like now reflecting back on the experiences, I'm realizing certain things that triggered it. And so I think that for people who do have anxiety, finding those triggers is a big part of trying to combat it. Uh, that's what a lot of people commented on as well and reached out about is, is trying to figure out those triggers. So for me, one of them was definitely caffeine. The first time I remember I drank a cup of coffee, which I didn't have regularly, but I had it sometimes. So it was caffeine and then something about my work and, um, now looking back, I'm realizing that I think it was the whole idea that like I had to like put on a almost like perform. Not as, that, as, a, as somebody like just hosting people and whatnot. Yeah, as a server, like you know, I have to be friendly and outgoing and very talkative, and so it's like there's this pressure on you to show up and people have their attention on you, and I think. I don't think the first time that really had anything to do with it. I think that was more, I was very freshly postpartum. Eli was only maybe three and a half, four months old. And it was just an adjustment. And then you had the strep come in and the antibiotics, the multiple rounds of antibiotics. Well, that's this most recent time. Right. Okay. And you were talking about before. Yeah. That was the very first time I had it at work was when I first started working there. And then this last one that I had there. Yeah. It was definitely a combination of um, a negative reaction to a specific type of antibiotic. And then mixed with Excedrin migraine medicine, which is something I don't really take often. And it has caffeine in it. And I just like popped two of them. My blood sugar was low because I didn't eat anything. So it was totally just this like combo of things. But I had had some like kind of funky anxiety related experiences at work before that major one I had recently. And part of it that my doctor helped me realize was that like it was the fact that I wasn't feeling good for a couple months. And then you know, giving my energy to the kids and being here and then going to work and having to like give more energy and give more, give a performance to people there when I wasn't feeling good. I think that's part of it. Cause I don't like, I'm not somebody who wants to be fake. You know, I want my excitement and my friendliness to be genuine. And so I think that is something that kind of added to it. And Dr. Zoe actually helped me kind of piece that together. Like she's like, well, yeah, you weren't feeling good and you have to show up and you know, your, the attention's on you. And I was like, oh, yeah, totally. That makes perfect sense why it would kind of make me anxious. And then, you know, so the good news is that I had some blood work done uh, before I started getting sick, before I got strep. And she was really impressed with it. And she, like, said she has high standards. And so that made me feel really good because I feel like I just needed a little bit of validation that like I'm doing things right as far as diet and just my overall health. And obviously I am. She said all my numbers were super good. Um, and then, 
yeah, just whatever, however that strep came to be, it just really knocked me out the second round of antibiotics. And, um, so kind of the protocol she was doing is mostly trying to like heal my gut. And she doesn't think that like the anxiety is something she said, it's like very situational for me. It's not something that is mm, like more of like a biological type thing. It's just like situational. And, you know, she said, you've got three kids and you're a young mom. And she's like, it makes sense that you sometimes have anxiety. Like that's very, that, you know, she kind of made me feel like it's, it's normal in that sense. So I think my cases of it have been very situational and I don't, I'm not somebody who has like chronic anxiety. And so I really want to encourage people if you can, you know, to find a naturopath. They tend to want to get to the root of the issue rather than just write you a prescription for I don't know, Prozac. I don't even know what the drugs are. But like having said that, I'm not like if you need the Prozac or you need the drugs to function and to help you, then absolutely do that. But if you're somebody who wants to maybe not be on them forever or find the root causes of what's going on, and then somebody like a naturopath, I think, can really help because they look at your whole lifestyle. They look at your diet, especially. They just go over everything, lifestyle, your diet, your, you know, they'll do blood work. So it's, it's not, you know, a lot of people don't even really know about naturopaths and maybe there's not a one around you. Um, I brought all my supplements to show you guys um, just because it's really expensive too. That's another part of it but I was to the point where it was like I need to like figure this out and get back to health I don't care what it costs and it was a good thing I did because nobody else really could help me they just kept throwing antibiotics at me and obviously those weren't working so I just let my body heal itself and now I've been strep free for a while now Uh, how's that yeah (laughs) stop taking antibiotics and the strep goes away (laughs) right (laughs) Well, stopped taking it, and then it came back. So then I just didn't take it that third time. I asked, I was like, can I just let my body heal? And she's like, yeah. And I mean, the whole reason I took them in the first place was because strep is very contagious, and so I didn't want to get anybody sick. But nobody ended up getting sick, and I had it three times. So it's just, yeah. It's just you, Hillary. It's just me. I don't know. It's very weird. But, um feeling so much better getting back to exercising and man, it just like, what, that was, really was there rough. like a, was there like a breakthrough point for you where you felt like this is the way, or was there a moment when you, re- when you knew that you were going to get past it easily or was there any kind of moment that you had, or was there anything that you can recall that you did specifically that you know was the right thing to do to help you? No, <laughs> not really. I mean, <laughs> Like, when I decided not to take the third round of antibiotics, like, you know, I was very on the fence. I was like, oh, like, yeah, I don't want to, but, like, I don't want to be sick anymore, you know? I was just like, at that point, it was kind of out of desperation that I would have taken them, but thought it through more and what I believe our bodies are capable of and kind of got back to, like, being a little more grounded and believing in the healing power of the body and all my natural remedies and stuff. And I was just like, yeah, it was, it was definitely interesting for, for me to see you <laughs> like going to the antibiotics. So kind of easily. And then when you explained that it was cause you just didn't want to be all sick. Then I was like, okay, it makes sense. But it just doesn't strike me as something you'd be like, Oh, antibiotics. No, Let's I mean, I, ha- I haven't been on antibiotics since I was a kid. Yeah. So it was just because I know it's something that's really contagious and I don't want, you know, our one-year-old to get it and the boys too, like, so I was kind of trying to do it as a protective means to everybody else. And then it just, man, it was backward on you. a very long two months and made me feel really thankful for good health. And, um, you know, it, it, it's, you know, definitely things happen for a reason. And out of that came this transition from, me quitting my job and kind of trying to focus on some other areas and work on the podcast and pick up some catering gigs where I am like 
supposed to be in the background. It's really nice, like not having the attention on me. Like, you know, I'm just kind of sliding through cleaning things up or, I mean, if I'm bartending, I guess, you know, there's some attention, but it's just not that much pressure. It's just, especially we've like, got whole weddings. tables of people waiting for you to come and take right. care of them. weddings. Everyone's just mellow and in a good mood and, and I get to pick and choose my schedule. So that's kind of nice. It's like, I feel like as we're getting busier with the kids in school and stuff, um, it's nice to not have my work schedule to also juggle. It gives us more freedom to like do stuff as a family and not be like, well, can I get work out? You know, I just, it feels really good. And it was a really good decision. And yeah, I feel like just kind of a door has closed and a new door has opened. And I'm just like, yeah. Pre one wheel and post one wheel. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Not quite. The one one wheel came in once that door closed already, pretty much. Once I made the decision, like, well, I just thought about it. I was like, I don't want to go back. Like, it just didn't feel right, you know? I felt like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm done. So that was a great decision. So, you know, if you're struggling, like, look at your lifestyle. Look at your job. Look at your, the food you're putting in your body. You know, it's, it, when you go the natural healing route it can take longer but it can be so much more effective it's not going to be an overnight fix like a pharmaceutical drug but it it could eventually help cure whatever issue yeah it's just like blowing my mind how many people struggle with anxiety like all the responses that I got everyone reaching out people sharing their stories I'm like holy shit like there's something going on in the world like we're not supposed to live this way like humans aren't supposed to have anxiety attacks and I mean they're a certain level yeah of like caution and worry and stuff but like not the way people are experiencing it today I think that there's like a combination of factors going on that's exacerbating it but no people should not have to live that way people living I'd say the ultimate combination would be like people living in cities, being on uh, social media all the time. And I mean, just, I guess that's just those two things right there. Yeah. I mean, that's part of it. You know, we constantly have, like we're constantly bombarded with advertisements and everything is so fast paced. Like <laughs> food to me is a huge factor because. Sure. sure yeah. That's the third thing. I You could definitely have that as a third thing. Yeah. I mean, our, the mineral content in the soil is degraded so much. So even if you are eating healthy food, you're probably deficient in certain minerals, which can play a huge factor. I mean, magnesium, I've read some articles that say like magnesium is huge for helping people with depression. Um, it's something that you don't, you know, it's like, it, it's amazing how strong our bodies are, but then also kind of how delicate they are these days because we are not getting those things, the zinc, the magnesium, all that stuff from the soil naturally. So our bodies are kind of having to, to try to catch up with that. And then, I mean, the amount of preservatives in food and, um, hydrogenated oils and high fructose corn syrup. I mean, it's just like, you know, if I can recommend anything, it's just like whole, like make your own food as much as possible, you know, anything packaged, I mean, you know, to an extent, like just try to make as much of your own food as possible and avoid all that kind of stuff because that definitely can't be helping all that artificial stuff. Our bodies just aren't, aren't meant for it. You know, definitely like doing some meditation in the morning or, or at some point during the day, even if you're not somebody who meditates, it's it's so hard, but it can also be really easy. You just focus on your breath, you know, maybe start with three minutes. And I think that when you're, when you give yourself that quietness in your mind, you can start to tune into your body and maybe eventually your body will kind of like give you the answers. Like you'll get a, it, your intuition will kick in and it'll be like, oh, like I wonder if this anxiety is having to do with X or Y or Z. You know what I mean? Like I feel like we can tap in and listen to our bodies if we give ourselves that quietness and that space. I don't know. This might sound like voodoo. It all sounds crazy to me. I'm just over here quiet, (laughs) just taking it all in. No, but I'm serious. I mean, our bodies are intelligent. And I think that 
when we can tune in to our body's own wisdom, we might find something out that we didn't really realize before. I listen to myself all the time. I know you do. Constantly. And you watch yourself all the time, too. I do. Yeah. You're like, I'm going to watch myself on this vlog for the fifth time. <laughs> <laughs> fifth time? I don't know about that. I do, I do like to watch back to... Oh, my leg's falling asleep. Try and find what I can make better or... Yeah. I think you like just watching yourself on camera. <laughs> That's interesting. No, I'm kidding. It's good to... I mean, it's like if you're a writer, you'd like read your article over and over again. It's kind of the same thing. I like to see what things that I, I like most. Yeah, sure. What I like most about it and how I can make those things better to learn. I don't know. I don't know. But then also that like when, when I was filming, what I was filming today, little to no thought put into it. Right. But I'm sure you'll watch it a few times. Yeah. I'll watch it a few times <laughs> just to see how, yeah, make sure it all goes well. Yeah, so, you know, point is... The, See the if you can add a little hope. bit of music here. Sorry, I'm, <clears throat> I'm, I'm cutting you off. <clears throat> you took over the whole thing, Not which is fine, wrong. which is what I had you here for, was to talk about Well, but thing. I do want to show my, my stuff, my oh, supplements. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, show your stuff. So, um... Probably should have had it on the table the whole time. Well, one of Godzilla's. Well, you could have... Yeah. Oh, it's a pharmacy over here. Can I, can you, this camera can see it? Yeah. Okay. So this is to heal my gut um, and it's an immune booster. So this is like for me personally, but this is the kind of stuff you'll get from a naturopath that she kind of wants to work on multiple things. Um, so this is, yeah, for healing the gut from it, the good bacteria being depleted. We'll put a link in the description for every one of these items. Oh, okay. I don't even know where you can find these. Oh, well, I don't where did you find them? At her office. Oh. But we can tell you more what they are. Um, this one is specifically for my throat. I do have big tonsils. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was weird. Um, so Not this as weird is... as we watching myself on video five times in a row. <laughs> so this is also like um, an immune booster and uh, to help heal my throat and bring down the swelling. She did find on my blood test that I was a little bit high for some allergens, which kind of makes sense. I get like a itchy ears and throat kind of a lot, maybe more like certain times a year. So I'm taking this and then we actually got a, a kid version for Noah because he's having some allergy issues. Just so you know where the, the thing is on that mic, it's on the front of it, not the top of it. The, what, di what the diaphragm is? is like here. What does that mean? That's, I mean, if you want to talk more into it, it looks like you're trying to talk at the top, but you want you actually want to talk to the side over no, here. I guess I'm just trying not there to hide is. behind it. Okay. Yeah. So these are the two things she gave me specifically for anxiety. So I really wanted to share these and disclaimer, I am not a doctor. Don't blame me if you, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if these don't work or something. No, um, he's not a doctor. But you can get these at the health food store. So clearly they're not like prescription or, you know, super heavy duty. Um, L-theanine, Theanine, yep, L-theanine. Um, I take 200 milligrams of this a day, I believe, as needed. So not every day. I'm not taking them every day. And then this one is called GABA, and she has me taking, I believe, five. I take two of these. So I take 500 milligrams a day. So far, so good. Um, so these are the main things she prescribed for anxiety and then also um uh, magnesium. So I take this, uh, powder, it's called calm. It's really good. You just mix it in water. Um, again, you can find it online or at a health food store and that, uh, is supposed to help with relaxation as well. So yeah, this one says focused relaxation. It's a unique amino acid found almost exclusively in the tea plant. Um, green tea, I think specifically, which I think this is also a chemical component of matcha, which is why matcha, if you are going to drink something with caffeine, but you're sensitive to it, matcha is actually one of the best because it has this or something very similar that kind of like counteracts the effects of the caffeine. So I drink matcha regularly. And then, um, GABA, it says it's a natural neurotransmitter, promotes relaxation, eases nervous tension. And then it has some other stuff in it. So those are specifically 
for anxiety. So I really wanted to share those with you guys and hopefully it will help somebody. There's also a lot of other natural supplements out there that um, are supposed to help with relaxation. Yeah. I mean, I wish I had the magic answer. I just, I really feel for some of you who reached out. Um, and I really hope that you guys find, figure out what works and don't give up, you know, there's totally hope. It, it's not, I feel like it's not your natural state to be that way, you know, but you, but you're going to have to put in work. You are going to have to put in effort. You might have to spend some money. Um, and you might have to do some major lifestyle changes, but you know, that's what you got to do if you want to make a change. If yeah. you want to do anything, you really want to do something that you really want to do better. You got to put in a lot of hard work to it, even if it's, uh, means your health. Yeah. Or Mental financial physical. stability. <laughs> <laughs> More one wheels. One wheels for everyone. Wee. <laughs> no, we uh, we'll figure it out. I mean, I'm still working a little bit, not nearly as uh, much. It's not going to be nearly yeah. as consistent. But I, I think I was also putting way too much pressure on myself for the financial aspect of my job. Hmm. You know, like I was like, I can't take like if I'm going to take time off, I have to make it up by picking up a shift. Like I was, just, I don't know. I why. know you did that a lot, and I tried to tell you like, what? No. No, no, Hillary, no. And it's always like, yes, yes. I think I have just lost a little faith that you're handling the finances properly. <laughs> Why do you got to keep bringing up my one wheel, bro? <laughs> no, I mean, like, I feel, I don't know. I just feel like it would take pressure off you by me bringing in consistent income. Nah, I'm good. I know. And so it feels good to let go of that and be like, oh, okay, like I can chill a little bit. And, you know, mostly why I'm doing these uh, kind of catering jobs is so that I can have like fun money and go thrift shopping and buy Leia clothes and, you know, stuff like that. that we don't need, but I want because everyone deserves a little bit of that. Sure. Mm -hmm. Like one wheels. Yes, I, it's awesome. It is awesome. I'm gonna go ride it after this. I'm tired right now. Like I have, I have no more energy to put into this microphone really because I'm. I did this. You saw the setup. This is ridiculous. I need to have something where this is like already set up all the time. If I'm gonna continue to do things like this, I think. <laughs> However, also just going hard today. My legs know. are kind of sore from the one wheel. I think like I was putting way too much. I was like. I was You're like, too, too stiff. tense. Yeah. Too tense. Yeah. You got to let it loose like a snowboard and let it flowboard. <laughs> a flowboard. Well, and it's so in the hips. Like, remember he said, like, lean your shoulder over. So I was kind of like trying to like lean my shoulder over. And then once I moved my hips, I was like, oh. I told oh. you to do the hips. Well, yeah, eventually. But at first I was just like stiff and like, yeah, it's really fun. It I like fun. doing it on the grass, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ready for hard surfaces quite yet. I mean, I could have had to. Well, from the it. grass to the track was a good transition because that track's made out of soft yeah. rubber. Yeah. Pretty much, or hard rubber. Whatever. I still kind of feel like I would maybe like elbow pads because I know if I was going to eat it when I tend to like fall yeah, I feel off like skateboards. Wrist pads would be the, more the way to go. No, like when I fall off skateboards, I you dive. Go, you go elbows? I like, hmm. I don't know, the few times that I've like really eaten it on like a longboard skateboard. It's always like a dive. I don't know. That's I think I'm like Elbow pads. making like the, the landing softer or something like by like instead of just like, I don't know. I am going to go ride the one wheel after this. Okay. I mean, what? what? Well, just the last time you went late at night, I woke up at one and you weren't home and I got all worried and you were over at Michael's. I have my phone. I know, but. Well, I went riding after Michael's. I went around to the lake after I left Michael's house. I went riding around the lake. No, but like when I talked to you, it was like one and you had left at like 1030 and you were still not home when I woke up at one. Yeah, I made new one whale friends. <laughs> I was just going to go to Vaughn's I, on the way there. The people yelled at me from the bar sure. about the one whale. So I went over yeah. and let them ride it. And they bought me a beer and I... Ah. Then I went to Michael's. And he is like ah. the owner of a skate shop or something. I know. He has a like, half pipe in his backyard. Ear. Oh, I, I didn't mention that. Yeah, I let him run the one wheel around. He's nice. he like, go in there and tell so and so. Had he tried it before? Mm -mm. Did he fall? No. Nice. He had ridden to the bar on a skateboard. Okay. But I mean, yeah, that thing is definitely takes a minute to get a feel for it. 
if you have a half pipe in your backyard, I feel like that's a pretty good mm. prerequisite for jumping on a one wheel, no matter how many beers you had. Yeah, pretty much. Uh-oh. There you go. Oh, that's the worst. <laughs> It'll come later. Oh, man. Um, I don't know. Is there anything else I should talk about? That no, I, I just, yeah, this is, that's all this, cover? the point of this was for, was to, for you to be able to talk about, um, how y- your anxiety has gotten better and talk about how my one wheel has made my life better too. Yeah. And I'm also like, <laughs> you over there, like mm-hmm. that. <laughs> yeah, no, I did. I, cause it, it has, you're really enjoying it and I'm glad and it's bringing joy to your life it is it's amazing yeah i liked it yeah it's i really like crazy it how much is like just get making me want to go out more and do, be out mm-hmm. like a, and when i made friends for the first time at, out at a task like out at the night a task nightlife <laughs> <laughs> i've never done that before yeah and i was just no, going cool. to the store to get ice cream but on my one wheel yeah should we should we talk about that talk about what should we talk about you and how you've kind of been not doing so hot in the old uh diet department <laughs> i'm talking about i'm doing fantastic i mean it's not like physically manifested too much but you just haven't really shown any desire to stop which is the to only part that worries what? me going stop to the store and buying cream? coca-cola and stop eating ice cream every day you get into these patterns where it's like sugar 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 and you know diabetes in your family and you're in your late 30s, and now is the time to make a change if you don't want to have to deal with medical shit. And after going through it for two months, you don't want to have to deal with medical stuff. So get it together. Hmm. <laughs> I don't think I'd do it in excess. I mean, ice cream every night? It hasn't, it hasn't been every night. I had some ice cream last night. Didn't have any ice cream the night before. You ate the rest of mine. That was the night before the night before. Was it? Was I, it though? I don't know. Really. A couple of Cokes a day, like. I had one. And then at the water park? Yeah. And you just seemed to like bring them out of thin air. <laughs> like, oh, there's another Coca Cola. <laughs> uh... Just moderation. I don't want you to have to go on some crazy diet and just really want you to work on like, your moderation well i've been kind of trying that like cause I, i'm not drinking like a six pack of sodas i'm not i'm not eating like a gallon plus two pints of ice cream i'm and i'm riding bike i'm one wheeling i'm doing jump rope no, for and sure i mean like all other parts are healthy push-ups for the most part it's just the sugar just how much is in a pint of ice cream i tried to get this family to curb itself off sugar and this family proved that it couldn't curb itself off sugar as a family and if it's not going to be as a family it's going to be very very difficult for me i know but that's not really fair to put like the blame on us well it's not fair to put the blame on me i'm not putting blame on you i'm just i want you to be able to enjoy these things just not all the time (laughs) (laughs) it sounded really mean (laughs) no matter how you meant it like my 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 uh, brain and my five-year-old heart said mm-hmm. eh. <laughs> eh. <laughs> but I, I, mean, I don't there's alternatives yeah well, but they, they need to make themselves a pin appear out of thin air for me or it's not gonna work this is true you don't do well unless it's right there for you no i just i mean i've got lots of energy to do lots of good stuff and I do things, and yes, I, I could be in better shape, and I have been in better shape earlier this year. And I guess and, uh, my standards are pretty high. Oh, man. I mean, compared to the rest of the population. We're supposed to be talking about you and your It's not problems. like you eat a SAD diet. SAD stands for Standard American Diet. In and out does sound pretty good right about now. Yeah, you haven't had in and out in a really long time. I know, I should really good change job. that. <laughs> I should go get some right now. <laughs> On the one wheel. In the drive-thru. <laughs> I don't Wonder think what they, I don't, they, they I don't think they'll let you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, it's a motorized vehicle, mm, right? That's true. Mm. Document it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I really, uh, I have got nothing else to talk about, especially if we want to try and talk about, we can make a whole separate well, I'm curious, video like, about my 
problems. Yeah, and I'm almost ready for bed, but I'm kind of curious, like, your observations of everything. Like, did you, because, like, the way I felt the past few months was so crappy and bad, and I feel like just the fact that, like, I can put on music and, like, dance with the kids, and I wake up, and I'm like, good morning. Like, I just have this energy. Like, do, do you see a shift? Oh, absolutely. Like, do you feel like I was a different person during that time? Yeah, 100%. And I oh, felt okay. like I needed to be very careful with you. Yeah. Like, you were a delicate yeah. little flower that I needed yeah, to... Yeah, and, uh, I mean, you definitely helped out, like, giving me space and, I think, not acting like I was just, like, milking it. You know, like, I feel like you, like recognize that something was like really going on oh yeah i did i i definitely didn't show it but i was i was having a little mini anxiety myself about your anxiety mm. like just like wanting you to be okay and not mm. feeling like there was a whole yeah was just giving you space and letting you do your thing and trying to not let myself which you know myself i'm i can be pretty intense <laughs> just, a little, just a little bit <laughs> you have your moments but do you feel like i'm back oh 100 yeah. percent. me too yeah like there's been a couple of days well like i could feel because I, when i went to the naturopath i i remember that day i was i was like still having days like i just feel like kind of tired you know i just like didn't wasn't high energy and we know neither of us are to be fair, like, yeah, you're back 100%. Neither of us are there 100%. We have, we have pieces of ourselves to give to everything that we're doing. Like I, me f with the videos and the shows and the Freedom Reader and, and the okay. and everything that that's that I'm putting energy into, mm -hmm. um, including kids. Right. So, well, and I'm not saying, like, I'm never going to get a cold again or I'm never going to get sick. But, like, there was, like, a clear shift of, like, okay, like, my body is healing now. Like, I could just tell. Like, even after a couple of days of seeing her, it was like, like, I didn't wait. You know, like, when you get, like, the flu, you feel that all over body, like, soreness. Yeah. And just kind of, like, yeah. tiredness. It just felt like that, like, for days in a row. And so it was nice to talk to her, and she justified that, like, yeah, that's just your immune system, like, healing itself and your gut. That's another thing I did want to mention that I didn't talk about is um, the importance of gut health. And if you haven't looked into that, um, they're calling our gut the second brain. And I don't remember how many neurotransmitters. I think as many as are. the brain, if not Something, more. Something. I mean, they're finding Maybe out that more. like <laughs> your gut bacteria is essential for good health. So much more than they ever thought. So look that up online. Check it out. Eat fermented foods. Take probiotics. Take really good care of your gut health. Um, the microflora. And that's what antibiotics do is they kill the good bacteria. So then it's like just this like catch 22. So that was something else I wanted to mention that I didn't, um, that I know I'm also taking a probiotic from the doctor. So yes, gut health, huge, huge, huge. Gut health. Yeah. Luckily our kids eat sauerkraut like candy. Yeah. <laughs> well, except Eli, but he eats pickles. Yeah. And he eats sauerkraut too, just not like candy. He doesn't. He doesn't really eat it when I put it on his plate. Yeah. Like no, always ends up taking it. Little mash mash. They've been doing really good tonight about not coming out and waking up. Yeah, I keep expecting Leia to wake up any second. I'm sure she will. Moin. What does she say? Moin ma. Moin. 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 Moin me. I don't even know what it is. Moin. Something. Yeah, like moin. Moin. I mean, she can say mama and mommy. She likes to say moi, moi. Moi. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Oh, man. She freaking gets me, dude. I know. Me too. <laughs> they all do, though. Such a, like, a, such a sucker. You're a pushover. All right. Well. Big time. Oh, this will be it. We'll talk about this on the next podcast. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, rules and the regulations don't seem to exist. We just have Luckily different I'm approaches. Here. Luckily, I am we here. We just have different approaches to mm, yes. dealing with Consequences things. versus none. Which I think is healthy, though. I think it's really <laughs> healthy to have the balance. I I, no, I agree. I agree. It's, it is good to have that. But, because, but just we're both lucky that the other has the other. Otherwise, yeah. our kids would be screwed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. It would be hard and loveless or defenseless and full of soft, gushy stuff. 
It was, oh man, it was so cute the other day, Noah. We were in the car and he said, there, I don't remember if it was something that happened at school or I don't know, but he was like, and mommy, I just told myself to breathe in and breathe out and breathe in and breathe out and breathe in and breathe out. And then I felt better. And I was just like, I taught him that one. I'm so proud of you. I taught him that. Uh, well, I think we both probably did. I always say, like, take a deep breath and think about things. But, yeah, it just made me really proud that he acknowledged that that helps and that he did it. Family podcast. Eli starts preschool tomorrow. Oh, yeah, that's right. Congratulations, Eli. Holy crap. (laughs) We'll see. I'm going to cry. I already know it. I feel like preschool was harder for me than, like, kindergarten and first grade. I hope I haven't been breathing in the mic the whole time like you've roped into the mic on me. Roped. Roped. <laughs> what, just now? Just in general. Oh. I feel like I've been doing a little better I feel like this my time. headphones aren't really working. We're going to find out real quick at the end of the... I, I didn't check the levels on my mic at all, really. all of a sudden. <laughs> Pulled up my pants. I, turn, I didn't turn the air conditioning... I turned the air conditioning off, so we oh, wouldn't have noise. I, I turned it on. <laughs> Why am I getting all hot all of a sudden? Probably this bright light. It's not helping. I think we're good here. Okay. Yeah. You, you, you got everything across you want? Yeah. That's the hope... main point is I want you to express like how you're where feeling now, where point. you're at, yeah. kind of how you got there, what you're doing now to maintain it. Right. And I feel like we covered all that. And the one wheel. Yeah. <laughs> and the one wheel. Got to talk about the one wheel. Got to talk about the one wheel. It's... Have you posted videos of it yet? Yeah. A couple. Yeah. Like the first day I got it when I was, oh, okay. when I crashed next to the geese in the park and. <laughs> I gotta watch that one. Oh, I crashed today too on the one that I'm gonna put out. Um, the, kind of, the video that came out before this one. There's a couple of bales, <laughs> street bales. Well, I hope that this helps somebody in some way, somewhere. Hey, if it does, then that's really one of the main points of any one of these videos. I like these videos, no matter what they're about. No matter yeah. if we're sitting here with the podcast, no matter we're running down the play with the snakes with the kids downstairs. That is the main goal of every single one of these videos that gets put on YouTube is that somebody sees it, makes their it day does better, something positive. does something positive something, in their life. Yeah. If that happens for one person, mm-hmm. then it was worth it. Mm-hmm.